his leaders and you know my expectation uh, expectations are way higher than i expected so um i just want to say thank you all you know first of all and after this morning i was sitting there and and uh, listening to dr monroe and it was just i was just so full and at the end when he said someone in here just got healed i felt that i felt that not me i'm healed and i pray for my healing every day but there, I felt that healing in the room. So I was just crying and crying and crying. And, and then I went to the bathroom. And this is how we, we get in these sessions. We get so serious you know, in these sessions because we're so touched. And I was just so full. And then I went to the bathroom afterwards. And there was a young lady in the bathroom. And she said to me, she, had, she kind of brought me back. She said to me, can you see my panty line? And so, you know, we have to learn not to be so serious about it all, you know, just to take it all in. So, so my point was, I came up to Dr. Monroe after the session and I said to him that, you know, and I just want you to, you know, kind of, you know, uh, think about some of the words that we've heard, you know, this week. Ideas and precepts and concepts and, and world and earth and yoke and all of that is just so simple. We've read it a million times. We've seen those words a million times. We learned to spell it probably in second grade, you know, but we never saw it in the way that we're being taught to look at it now. And that is just what so fills you up. It just fills you up and you gotta go back. And so I said to Dr. Monroe, here's what we need at the end of all of these, these, these days. What we need is a class that says, why didn't I know that? How did I miss that? And what do I do now? I need that at the end of these seven days because I have to go back home. I have to go back home and I have to figure it all out. What do I do now? I'm like you. And probably just, you just all. A on that. Very great. That's a great question. Isn't that a great question? Why didn't I know that? Mm -hmm. Why didn't I see that? What do I do now? Mm -hmm. Good question. And we get asked that every single seminar. And number one, I really believe in changing your associations when you go back. That's vital. Um, I had to leave and go out into a place unknown by myself and seeking a community. I had to start it because there isn't one. Wow. Because all I'd lived in was religion, and I knew any church I went to, no, nobody could offer me the kingdom. So, a few people started asking me questions. How do I pray? And I started teaching based on questions, because the student determines the lesson. So, based on other people's information or quest for knowledge for the truth I started teaching to the capacity I understood at the time so because my capacity was limited I used Dr. Miles DVDs and I said sit and learn with me because as I'm learning I want you to learn as well I'm not qualified to teach because I'm having to rewire my brain so I purchased the DVDs I purchased the CDs for my car and I made my car an education seminar. And I never wanted to get out of my car <laughs> when I pull up to work in the grocery store. I would just sit there. I would pull over at times to take notes. Because I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't believe. What did he say? And I'd rewind and take notes. And so it starts with renewing your mind, getting the resources that he's made available, and eating it as if it's your life, because it is. This gives you life, it's your food. Um, and then others started jo uh, joining the journey, but I did not solicit anybody from any church. Even my good friend that was still going to my old church, I didn't tell anybody what I was doing because they needed to discover this for themselves. So once you start moving and you're going somewhere, people that want to go with you will join you. But my objective was not for other people to join me, but it was to get this information. 
And my hunger level, level pulled it from God, pulled it from the resources. And then others will join you. And people are waiting for you in your community for you to get this. So learn together. Put the DVDs in. The first time I did it, I invited my pastor and his wife over. We're going to have a kingdom night. Let's watch these DVDs. And I started with them. Well, he didn't want to hear it. He wanted to talk the whole time. But his wife wanted it. And I started that way. And I started in my home, just like the first church. Now, something about the kingdom that I love, the kingdom is so simple. It, God simplifies things. And that's what I love about Jesus' teaching. He takes the complicated things of God and makes it simple. So I started simple in my house, and I invited the ladies. We sat around my dining room table studying. Pastor Ruth came and started teaching us. It was exciting. And then it grew, and they said, we want our husbands to come. I said, well, I have a resource. I have a meeting room. You guys, you know people with businesses. Some of you are business owners. After hours, invite people to come in. Go to a restaurant. Go to Perkins. Sit in the back room there and communicate, commune come together and share the exciting things you're learning and learn from one another. Dr. Miles has a Bible study, a kingdom um, study uh, guide book for groups, small groups. So we just encourage you to take the book, study them, one another, and learn. So tell them, learn what I'm learning. Come with me on the journey. And then after a, a good time period, people say, Trista, start teaching. Or, mm -mm. I'm not going to start teaching. I don't want to start a church. I don't want. God tricked me, is what He did. Because I didn't want to teach every Sunday. This takes commitment, it takes time, studying, and I'm busy. But I had to do what He called me to do. And I love it because now I have some people that are hungry, and hungry people will come and find you. And it's fun. And it's fun. Ain't that wonderful? Thank you, Trista. Well done. So when you're 69 and you get it, you even don't go to church anymore, you, you start pursuing. Boy, I tell you, that's a heavy lesson back there. You all better listen to mama. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, delegates. Uh, thank you very much, leaders. I've enjoyed this so much. I'm Deborah Krull. I'm from the United States, from the state of Pennsylvania. And I have a question um, related to uh, funding the work of the kingdom. Um, my question is, um, does the Bible speak to or is there a preferred model for funding um, these works of kingdom social transformation? I know that there is the philanthropic model, there is a business model, there are hybrid models that uh, with social entrepreneurship, Paul was a tent maker, um, but does the Bible speak to a preferred way recognizing that, as Dr. Miles said, that God provides for what he calls for, and um, also that every seed produces after its own kind. So I appreciate uh, any insight into that. Thank you. Well, as I understand it, the question is, does, <laughs> does the Bible give a model for creative finance for your dream? Preferred. My answer is, I don't know. I don't know if the Bible has a preferred model. Dr. Monroe may know. Uh, I just do what's in my head. I do what I have passion for and it makes money. I don't see the difference in the will of God and what Martin's thinking. To me, they're the same. <laughs> Next question. Uh, he did not ignore your question, I hope. What he's telling you is the Lord will give you unique ideas to finance his assignment he will give you unique ideas so don't ignore what you're hearing and what you are thinking okay yeah your passion will normally finance your purpose what did i say yeah 
I'll write that down. So, that you, <laughs> so you need to focus more, focus less on money and more on your passion. And your passion will attract the provisions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll make a comment. Just one last thing. Make a comment about church. You know, church is a different thing altogether for me. Uh, the word church has to be redefined all over again because it's, it's confusing. And we throw the word church around and I don't think we understand it. But the kingdom of God is a country. A country is a community. A country has systems by which it functions. We call them governing systems. Every country has uh, a model which they stole from God for financing the country's uh, demands. There are two models. One is taxes. Tithing is a tax. That's why it is set. Offering or giving is investment. So those are the two programs. And all countries have them. So don't think about, you know, God and church. If you are a country, you need these two systems. You need taxing, taxation, and you need investment, investors. Taxation is for maintenance. Can you write that down somewhere? Taxation never grows a country. It maintains a country. So when the Bible talks about taxation, it says, bring your tithe into where? So that there will what? Okay, so the reason for tithe is to keep the lights on, keep the rug clean, keep the maintenance people paid, keep the office running, keep, you know, that, that, that's for maintenance. You can't grow your, your, your ideas through, offer, through, tithe, through tithes. So the Bible has two words, tithes and offerings. Offerings are not tithes. Offering, read, say the word slowly, offer. See, you don't offer a tithe. <laughs> a tithe is a tax. You can't decide whether you can pay taxes or not in your country. You go to jail. The Bible calls it the devourer. The IRS will come and get you. Okay, the IRS, God has IRS as well. He call it the devourer. They will destroy your, your crops and Offerings are investments. That's what you offer for the work of God. That's a decision you make. That's an investment. Investment is what grows the country. So when David, for example, wanted to build a temple, David went to his own bank and withdrew from his own account first. And he wrote checks for that temple from his own private account. And I was dealing with, some years ago, I was dealing with a rabbi who told me the estimate of David's check. He said it was over $43 million U.S. Imagine one man wrote a check for $43 million for a project for God. He didn't collect tithes for that. That was an offering. That was an investment. So as a pastor or a minister, you must be careful not to confuse your tithes with your offerings. Uh, if you want to grow a work, you want to start a new project, if you want to expand something, you need investments. Okay, investments. And that's why we got to train our people in the, in, the, in the community of faith that, you know, their business is their, that's their work. And God gave them... Uh, trying to find the right word. Uh, God said, do not forget it is the Lord who gave you the power to get, to, to, to create wealth is the word, to create wealth. Wealth is created by ideas that God gives you. And that's what you invest, okay? So there are two models, but it's a national model. So you can't think in terms of religion, if, if you're gonna, this is gonna work. You think in terms of the kingdom, it's a country. You pay your taxes and you invest. And by the way, you can't really invest until you pay your taxes. 
Are you with me? If you owe the government taxes, you can't invest in that country first. They tell you you got to pay your taxes first, and then you can invest. So the same thing, is, I think, is about giving. Uh, you, you, you tithe, and then you give. The Bible never says that your tithing will be multiplied back to you because it's a tax. It says your offerings will be multiplied to you, back to you. So it's what you give over and above a tithe that's really the part that really grows. The tithe is for maintenance. Everybody clear on that? Yeah. So when, the, when, the, when a government wants to expand, like in our country, we have, to, we have to encourage investors to come. That big hotel being down there, that's a Chinese investment. That ain't no tax dollars from the Bahamas. When you want to grow something, you need investment. You don't need taxes. Taxes will maintain the roads that lead to that. Taxes may keep the electricity plant running to keep supplying electricity to that project. But the taxes can't build that. Are you with me? Yeah. That's why Jesus only bought business people in his company. He needed investors. Yeah. Last question. Okay. Name. Um, name is Kendra here from the Bahamas. Um, my question has to do with the difference between kingdom versus religion as it comes to justice. Um, and I'm thinking like three of you probably can answer it. Um, Krista spoke about her business uh, succeeding in a recession. Um, and um, of course we could see in terms of Christianity and even uh, to one of the clips that was shown in terms of how religion produces violence and so on and so forth. So my question is, if you are in the kingdom and you are facing injustice, um, whether it's children uh, who are being asked to honor parents, but the parents are not worthy of honor or abusive or whatever the case may be, um, or your business is in a recession, or you're facing a challenge in your marriage in terms of what is the key that's going to make the difference so that you see the blessings of the king on what you're doing, whether it's your family, your children, your business. So I'm thinking that has to do with justice. So the question is, um, how does that work in terms of the kingdom concept of it, that you can see that in every area of your life and it's producing regardless of whatever circumstances are taking place? A, uh, there is a key phrase um, <clears throat> that will respond to your question, I think. That phrase is, in the Lord. Now, authority is granted not for the benefit of those in authority, but for those under authority. In every, <clears throat> see, God is a God of order. In, in uh, nature, in society, in the church, everywhere. God is a God of order, and God has established certain roles of responsibility. And you, you mentioned specifically children and parents. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Uh, submission, husbands and wives. Submission is mutual. And wives, submit yourselves to your husband as unto the Lord. So the key there is harmony with the supreme uh, sovereign, our Lord God. And the authority is his authority delegated to those here on earth who are in those roles of responsibility. And... Uh, it has nothing at all to do with inferiority and superiority. It is a role of, of uh, function in carrying out God's plan for order. And everything's in his, under his purview as unto the Lord. And when the authority is abused or misused, then priority the priority is obedience unto the Lord himself. And um, that goes, the, the, the principle is submission to authority up to the point 
or submission to earthly authority uh, uh, means disobedience to heavenly authority. And God's authority, God's law takes precedent over everything else. Okay. Any other comments on that question? Yes. I, I think I should clarify something. And first of all, I'd like to apologize to the lady that asked the question. I made a presumption and I shouldn't have because I was hearing in your spirit a different question. Um, we obviously know and we've been taught for years about tithing and the offering, but I heard you ask this question. My dream is bigger than the offering plate. And I really have something that I want to do in my city or in my world that I may not have the resources for. That's what I was hearing. So um, in that light, I just want to say these words. Sometimes your dream of what God's assigned you to do is bigger than the people sitting in the pew. It's bigger than their tithe. It's bigger than their offering. And so at that moment, you, the leader, have to have faith and confidence in your dream. Don't ignore what makes you upset. Don't ignore what makes you, what brings you joy. Don't ignore the ideas that will not go away in your head. They're there all the time. Trust your instincts because it's only your instincts that will make money. And then having the character to make that money and then bring it into God's house called the church and use it to do big things. That, that's what I was hoping that I would encourage in you. Thanks. Well done. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank our wonderful uh, panel of speakers who've always been a blessing. Give them a big hand of thank you, please. And um, we want to uh, thank you for your questions. I know there are a lot of other questions, so we will be uh, stay here for the week to answer. But uh, I think Trista learned a very important lesson. Nothing is yours until you discover it for yourself. So go and seek the answers in the material that you have around there on the books and the CDs and DVDs and these wonderful speakers. The bookstore is open. Uh, before we dismiss uh, for the rest of the day, I have just a couple of announcements to make. One of them is a very exciting announcement. I couldn't believe this announcement. But you know, my son is now uh, taking over this area of my work, so he makes the decisions. Um, I was told to announce this wonderful announcement. All the people who registered early, I have your name, he gave me your names. Those who registered early for this seminar, you know who you are. But I'm gonna read your name because the seminar department have agreed or decided to do something for you very special. Those who registered early, Mr. and Mrs. Raymond and Cedri Black, is that correct? Danae Carr, Mary Carr, Jacqui Coles, oh, I got that, Jackie Coles, Andre Gonzalez, where's Andre? Wave at me, Andre. Is Andre here? I heard him some earlier. James Gowen, Gowen, Robert Jackson, Jerry Kiwi, or Kiwi, Lonnie Lawson, Mrs. Tracy Ohome, Ohome, and George Pine. These are the people who registered for the early bird. I was told that you are all going to get a copy of the entire conference free. So I guess it pays to register early. Uh, you will receive a free copy of the Kingdom seminar 2013 on CD or if you wish they'll make it available to you on a USB drive for registering early 
I was also told that if you register early for the leadership summit, they also will do something special. So that's my instructions. Uh, I mentioned to you about law, what I was going to speak on today, and uh, I really feel such a need to do this. So my son, I told him to get this package together. This is the complete package on kingdom law. Kingdom law. Uh, this is a whole library. If you want to understand the kingdom, understand law, understand grace, understand the relationship between grace and law, then this is the defining package. Uh, I'm still not sure what my son is doing. This is about $300. He said the entire volume, one through four, is for $40. I will deal with him after we are finished. <laughs> but 300 bucks. $40 for those who would like a package on kingdom law. How to live in the kingdom, in the laws of God, how to understand law, how to understand the mind of Jesus concerning law, and how to teach it. So this is a whole library for 40 bucks, and I don't want to argue with his judgment. I also was told to advise our Spanish-speaking family that there is a series on rediscovering the kingdom in Spanish. And this is available for you, uh, the CDs for $35 and the DVDs for $60. It's in Spanish, and you can get our teachings translated in Spanish. Uh, Rediscovering the Kingdom DVDs. I got to pray for my son. Is he serious? Rediscovering the Kingdom DVDs, a whole package of them is available for what twenty five dollars I gotta pray for him oh there he is come son kneel right here let me pray for you kneel right down here I gotta lose you I gotta pray oh you saying oh go Charo I have to pray for him rediscovering the kingdom which one is for twenty five dollars He got it mixed up. The, <laughs> oh. the Rediscovering the Kingdom DVDs, the album is $25. Uh, the other Spanish album is the Kingdom Training Seminar from 2012, from last year. Uh, the CDs is, uh, is for $35, the full album, the full set. The CD is $35 and the DVD is $60. That's 20 something um, session. Okay. So that's for um, the Spanish speaking registrants. Spanish speaking as well. All right. Thank you, son. Uh, anything else while you're here? No. Uh, the folks that registered early, um, you can see myself after the session closes, and I can get whether you want the CD or the USB drive um, so that we can get those ready for you guys before you leave. Okay? All right. Okay. okay. Uh, one last thing, I believe, uh, my son, partnership. Uh, many of you have seen the things I'm doing around the world and what we're involved in. And uh, I understand that some of you would like to go with me or you'd like to support what I'm doing. We have a different uh, assignment in partnership. And these are people who would like to invest in what we are doing as we travel every week, my wife and I and our team. And uh, we would like to have partners to help us with that. That cost us to do that. And our partnership is like $30 a month. That kind of helps us to, you know, keep the aircraft going, helps us to buy fuel, helps us to finance the process of uh, getting into these nations and doing different things. And also, we give you a monthly report uh, on what we're doing uh, from me personally so that, you know, your, your partnership is what making what makes this possible secondly all the partners we we put your name on a disc and you put we put you in the aircraft so you can travel with me wherever i go and it reminds me that you are making these meetings possible 
And every time someone gets born again or a government leader gets saved or a nation comes to Christ, that goes to the account of the partners because they are helping that happen. So uh, this is different from mentorship. This is uh, you personally helping me. Uh, mentorship is me helping you. That's different. Partnership is you helping me do the work that God called me to do. Is that clear? So mentorship is me serving you. I'm helping you. I'm giving you everything. A partnership is you are saying you want to help me. You appreciate what I'm doing. And uh, it's 30 bucks a month. And that helps us also. We will send you a CD every month of what I'm teaching on. You also get a, uh, a, a, a letter or a newsletter from me as to what the things that is on my heart and what I'm doing. Partners also have access to me if they want to ask me questions. Uh, if a partner wants to meet with me, if I come to their city or whatever, uh, we will contact you, you contact us, and then we can meet you in that city. And uh, we really want to have more, some more partners. I need uh, some more partners, and this is a long-term thing, so it's not money today. This is just signing up and saying, look, I want to partner with you, help you do what you're doing. I want to go with you in support, and uh, I really need you to help me keep going, okay? I'm serving you all the time, and that's my joy. But partnership is a different relationship. It means you are helping me as well do that work. Okay, so you pray about that. Uh, there is a brochure, I think, uh, like this, for partnership. Uh, you can pick up one of those on the table. And then this one here is for mentorship. If you want to join our, my mentoring program, uh, we have a mentorship luncheon in a minute. If you'd like to join that, you can actually pick up one of these and fill it out, and uh, you can sign up for the mentorship program. Okay, the mentorship program is very special. And uh, it's where I help you personally develop your leadership. Okay, you heard some of the folks talk about that. Uh, if you'd like to join a TWILA, which is our International Leadership Association, there's also a table over there with a TWILA, with uh, Dr. Peter Morgan is the president of that. I'm the chairman of the board. You can sign up for that, okay? And uh, we can make you a part of our global leadership network. Any country. We got many countries involved in this, and it's uh, a very exciting worldwide network of leaders okay so I want to thank you by the way brother Tracy who is our outstanding director of worship here at the church uh, he's a recording artist and he has a CD that looks like this now somebody bought a CD from him last night in that CD is his track you know what the track is the track is the music that accompanies him when he is singing different places. So the track is no good to you. So, <laughs> so uh, if you open this up and you see a CD that doesn't look like it belongs in that package, that's his track. So if I was you, I would do what, I was gonna say what the devil did, but that wouldn't work out too well. <laughs> You should tell him if he wants to redeem it. <laughs> if he wants to redeem it, he had to give you $25 or something like that, okay? In other words, put a little price on it for him to get it back. Because you already paid for that package. You didn't care what was in it. That was his problem. He, he missed and put the, the, the track in one of the packages and someone bought it. So please check, check your package. And if you see something that doesn't look like it belongs there, then that's his, okay? So return it, and he'll give you a replacement. Yes. All right? Is that clear? Thank you very much. Peace. Yeah. Uh, the question came concerning the assignment, the homework assignment that I gave to you. Uh, for those of you in Spanish speaking and Portuguese speaking, um, we will translate it and send it to you, okay? So be sure that you are registered and we will send you a copy of the, uh, the homework assignment in Spanish or in Portuguese, whichever one, one uh, applies to you. Those who are English speaking, I take it you already have yours and you've already begun to work on it. Thank you very much. Let's stand together. My son just did something else. I think he needs Jesus. Uh, I think some of you have seen the package of all my kingdom books. This is $120. He said that this goes on special today for $50. All the kingdom books in a pack. I don't know. Maybe you know something I don't know. 
So uh, you can pick up the whole pack of kingdom books. And if you have them already, buy them for someone else. Take them back for your leaders on your team. You get the whole pack for 50 bucks. Okay, so you're saving, you are saving like $70. I'll deal with you later. In the name of Jesus, amen. I love my son. Uh, those of you who are leaving tomorrow, uh, my son has an announcement to make about your certificates. Yeah, um, everyone that's leaving tomorrow, um, your certificates will be in the, foy in the foyer on the table. So you can pick those up as you leave. Okay? Anyone that leaves, I think some people leave tomorrow morning and won't be able to make it here to the session. So the, the certificates are on the table out in the foyer.